<laughs> Hello, everyone. Today we're diving into something exciting, taking multi-talk to the next level. If you've been following along, you know we've already used multi-talk to turn images into videos and bring characters to life with multi-talk's awesome lip-syncing capabilities. It looks a little something like this. Watch as the character talks, moves, and comes alive right before your eyes. But here's where it gets even cooler. I find something we can do from the basic examples workflow. Using video as an input instead of a static image for animate with multi-talk. Also, instead of short clips, we can now generate long-length videos from just a single image, like this one. It's 46 seconds of seamless action, or even videos stretching up to a minute or two. Yep, just like the YouTube shorts that I posted in the last couple of days. Some testing demo there. Check this out. I've got a stock video of a woman who's completely still. No talking. No mouth movement at all. But after applying this method using this technique, we can take that same footage and make her talk. It works. Then, I'll show you another example where I turned an image into a long listness video and made the character talk. I saw lots of you were asking this, and hopefully this video are inspired you to test this method. Let's jump in. As you can see, it's able to do the lip syncing very naturally with the motions of the character using the multi-talk AI model. Now, there are some settings I tested yesterday that should be used and others that shouldn't, which I'll discuss later in this video. But first, let's look at the hints where I found this multi-talk using video-to-video -video input generations. First, when you go to the Comfy UI WAN video wrapper, you can go to the examples workflow. The first thing you'll see is the very basic one, which is video to video right below here. This is like the first time you have the WAN video wrapper where this is the first example. So I'm going back to basics and trying this one out. Basically, this is using what you're seeing here, the workflow that I loaded from the examples workflow video to video 01, which is in here. And the model I'm using is Fusion X. But if you see the first part, which is the base model from 1 to 1.14b, text to video and multi-talk, you'll notice they are able to use text to video and image to video. Therefore, I've tried this method and integrated multi-talk in here, where we are able to generate using an image or using a video as input. Rather than having an image as an input, we're using video as input and then animating the character's mouth talking with your input audio. So basically, in this example, the video to video is the first very basic example that everyone should have. If you install the WAN video wrapper already, you can go to the examples folder to find that. Once you have this, you can drag this multi-talk custom node here, where you link up that multi-talk custom node with the wave to vac embed custom node here. Then, you're going to use the Tencent Chinese wave to vec base models for detecting the audio where we will also have the load audio in here for whatever audio files. Or, if you're using text-to-speech, you can input that output audio from text-to-speech as an input in here. And then, this is basically the whole structure of how it enables the mouth talking. The model loader, we need that for our multi-talk model to run. So simply, it's that easy to run the video-to-video -video input here. One thing I found out is that using the denoise setting maybe by default values, this is 0.5, and you can try that out with like 0.6 or 0.65. Within this range of denoise settings, you are able to get pretty close example outputs like this. Stay calm. This multi-talk is in testing with video input. And then, the mouth movements are able to animate with that multi-talk AI model that we have connected. Now if you are using Fusion X like what I did here, of course you can also use LoRa to run Cost V or any kinds of low sampling models in here. So let's say you have a Cost V 14B LoRa model, then that is good. But if you are running the Fusion X, not the WAN 2.1 14B base model, then obviously, in this example, I have the Cost V included in the Fusion X already. In this way, then you don't need to run a LoRa. Now, I have found out that using the Light X2 VCFG distillation LoRa model and trying to lower the sampling to run with this LoRa model will cause kind of not really good quality for the images and video frames. 
You will find out, like the examples that I'm showing here, you see the colorations between the beginning of the videos, darker colorations, and then at the end, you see it's brighter, and then it feels like the coloration is oversaturated in some areas as well. So these examples, I have used the Light X 2V LoRa connecting with the Fusion X like this. Then, it will come out with some scenes that you are going to have over explosion of light or some saturated colorations in some areas. But if you go normally without the Light X 2V LoRa model, you will get a pretty natural way of degenerate result like this one. I have not put anything at the beginning using this example for degeneration, and you don't need that anyway if you have the Fusion X models to run within here. So that is another thing that you have to remind yourself of, just based on the testing that I have done. Don't put these two models together at the same generation. Now, remember, the Fusion X we are using is the text-to-video Fusion X model in here. You can use FP8 if you have lower VRAM, and this is fine, up to you. That is what your hardware can afford to run. So based on that concept, I have created this workflow for inputting video for lip syncing and using multi-talk to have the character talking and then have the chat up box. Of course, we need that to run for our text-to-speech. Or, if you have a good audio recording before, you can use that, just put that line on here, and then I have still followed the examples workflow from the one video wrapper. Adding the audio separations on the front, and we are only needing the person's vocal sounds. If you know you have other music or background noise, then it will cut out those sounds, only focusing on the vocals here. And then, we have the sampling groups that I've just basically followed what I was talking about in this examples workflow, and then put everything in here just like that. On the top here, we have the model loader, and just what I have mentioned, I use the text-to-video Fusion X16 FP16. So if you go to the Fusion X Hugging Face repo, you go to the files, and then you will see a lot of Fusion X FP16 safe tensor files on the top here, where you see the Fusion X LoRa. This is a more convenient way for people to use Fusion X as a LoRa, and then the other LoRa in here, which is the thing that I was talking about, is the Realism Boost for WAN 14B. And there's another one called Detail Enhancer V1. This is most likely for your character's face, adding more detail. So let's try this again, and we are going to try out another text in the text-to-speech in Chatterbox. So I have a testing script for this text-to-speech model, and we are going to use a really general testing script in here, and try that out with what we have in the video-to-video, -video and see how the generation is. One more thing by the way, you can test is the enhanced video in here, where I have added before to try that, it will help a little with the video quality as well. Or, if you don't want to use that, just based on the Fusion X quality, you can do that, just remove this or you can use either way to try. But don't use the T-Cache. So far, I have tried it out because you are using CFG1 anyway, so why bother to use T-Cache? It doesn't make sense to use caching for a CFG1 sampling. So moving on in here, let's try this and see if there are any problems. We should not have any problems in here while this is running the first time. It is running the Chatterbox TTS, generating the audios, and then we will have the similar voice from Anna Clone Voice, and we got 8 seconds generated. So hopefully, there is something that we can run within that 8 seconds or less. Because something that you have to concern yourself with is your number of low cap. Although I have set no limit in this time, the video that I input has a limitation of 161 frames. So therefore, I will be having maybe cut off a little at the end from this text-to-speech audio sounds. And for the text prompts in video-to-video, -video, we don't really need to describe too much necessarily. For me, I just use this very simple text prompt. A person is talking. That's all I need. And because all the motions and the character are based on what we have from the input video, it won't change too much as an output for the generated video. And one more thing is that, again, you have to test with the denoise strength in here. Most likely, I would use 0.6 to 0.7. That is ideally for the lip syncing and without changing too much of your source videos look alike. So let's wait for the generate result and we will check it out later. Okay, so we got the generate result here and let's check it out how that sounds like with the audio. This is a testing video in Benji AI Playground. We are using Multitalk with one AI video. You can still see that it's able to do the lip syncing of this character. And then, I have also tried out that without the LoRa, it's actually doing better for using when you are using the Fusion X, because this already includes most of the things that we need within this Fusion X model. 
So the next step is we are going to use a longer video length instead of the typical 81 frames when 2.1. So therefore, I have created another workflow that does this. Generally, this is image to video, and basically, you can use, like what I show in some of the recent long generate videos on YouTube Shorts, able to create like 30 seconds or even 1 minute, 2 minute videos that we are applying the same concept in here. So basically, this basic workflow I am only showing the concept, and you can customize for whatever situations and cases that you want to work on. The things we need is getting the last overlap frames, and I am using just like the Skyreal DF models that we have talked about before, using an overlap frames. And I was trying using 4 in here, for the YouTube shorts for the robot dance video, and it's able to do it smoothly without problems. And if you want to do it like, even 8 frames in here, you can use that as well. And each of the samplings, I will call it right now, is a frame in chunk. So imagine this is like, you know, separate in different chunk sizes of video parts. So in here I have done part 1 for sampling 1, and then part 2, and so on. So basically, each sampling is going to generate 5 seconds of video frames. And then, after all, we will cut out the overlap frames from the generated video. So for example, in here, we got the video part 2. And from the part 2, we are going to chop it off, those overlap frames, and then bring it to trim that part 2 video. And then, we are going to stitch it back together as a whole video in here. So right now, we are using like, part 1 and part 2, and even you can use like part 3, 4. So imagine if you have 4 samplings, that will be about 20 to 21 seconds of video. It depends on your FPS, of course, and other factors as well. But so far, this is typically, if you are using 24 FPS or 25 FPS, then using 4 parts of video will be running like 22 seconds here. And what I have done is that using each sampling, there's a different text process prompt dedicated for each sampler. So therefore, we are able to have different movements even throughout the whole 20 seconds or 30 seconds. You can, like in my case here, I got a woman walking and dancing in the first 5 seconds here, and then the second part of the video, which the woman starts clapping her hands and cheerfully bouncing around in the forms, this is another action. So you can keep going on with then, you know, part 3, part 4, or even like part 10, if you have time to generate more, then of course you can do that as well. So basically you can clone this overlap frames to do it, but that would be more complicated if you are newbies, suggest you to just stay with what is the basic first, understand the concept, and before you apply it, that is also going to be published in the link in the description you guys can download for free. Play around with that and experiment how you generate 10 seconds or 15 seconds with two samplings. And then you can use the multi-talk in here import that video to this part, you can start making your character talking. And of course, for the Patreon supporters, I got full experiments of what I have yesterday. Doing the full workflow in here is going to be more complex and more logic applying in here. As you can see, I have also put like part 3 and part 4 different samplings or going to handle different overlap outputs. And then you are going to continue on the next sampling steps and so on. This is going to be typically generate 20 to 21 seconds of video length in here based on this starting image and then we are using the WAN video vase start to end frames as i have mentioned this start and end frames in previous videos this concept is very flexible where you can also input the control image which is generated the control net if you are using video to video in paint mask as well you can use that in cooperating with the start to end frames technique and pass that into the WAN video vase. Then this is what we are using for acting as the start frames for image to video. So here we got the reference image on here, and then the start of the starting part of the part 2 and part 3 and so on. We are passing in the part 1 last frames. So in here we called it frames, not frame because there's numbers of overlap images that we are going to pass into the second part. So this is why we need to set the numbers of overlap frames at the front in the beginning of the workflow in order to process this. And then basically this is going to be more logic, and it will require higher GPU power to run throughout this whole workflow in here. It is what it is, this is the reality of that because you have more content to generate. And then the last part in here, which is putting the video to video for multi-talk, I put this as a module. 
So this is more modularity style where I am able to put this on this workflow and then I can pass from the generated video as an input in here and we can continue using this sampling as the gen as the audio generations and also making the video characters talking. So that is the whole concept of this. So let's try out one time. And we are generating a long length video. That's why I was using just the demo of this image and going through the whole thing where we will be getting the video from here. And then at the final we will be going to use the text to speech from here. This group using chatterbox and then it will be generating the talking avatar with more motions instead of the characters standing still or very robotic styles of video. Let's try this one and we are going to see how that looks like. So one more thing I want to mention is that in the front this first part I like to use the native node for the connections because there's a GGUF quantize that is able to use for the native node model loader. In this part, I know that lots of people won't have enough VRAM to generate a large batch of frames in one time. So using GGUF does help a little bit to reserve more memory, save up memory, or not consume too much in these few sampling steps in here. So currently, I am generating two samplers just for testing purposes. And if you want to see something like the full length of video, you can check out my YouTube shorts that I have something like using one minute some length some kind of video like that and the character is talking. And one more thing is that if you want, of course high quality video might be considered to use, you know, the Fusion X Face FP16 that can be helpful to get more details from the generated video. Of course, that requires some VRAM to run. Or if you want to save less VRAM, then try out the FP8 of Fusion X Face that also helps for improving the quality. And we are going to see how that is going to look like in this generation. It won't be taking too much long because currently, I am connecting with the GGUF quantized model to generate this. Okay, so here we have the generated video. And first, we are going to see how we do with this video. First part, we are seeing the character standing, and then the camera zooms out, and it starts walking by path to the trees, and then clapping the hands. The clapping the hands motions are created in the part 2 of these scenes, and then it stitches it together as a whole video in here, as you can see the stitching pretty well during this time. And we are moving on to the next step, which is going to do the talking for the character. Let's check out how that looks like. We are testing the multi-talk with WAN video, Fusion X. I am able to talk now. Okay. Let's go to full size in the preview here, and we are checking out this one. We are testing the multi-talk with WAN video, Fusion X. I am able to talk now. Okay, so as you can see, the character is able to talk, and the mouth is able to lip sync. Pretty good timing using the multi-talk. I don't know if some people said it's setting the lips way of the timeline, etc. But for me, generally, it looks pretty close in my environment. Throughout my computer monitor, I see that it's pretty close. Not sure if that is some different settings or different computers seeing different views, but so far we are able to do that with the lip syncing and the audio together. So that is so far what I have found out using the very basic video to video way of doing the video as an input and using the one video text to video in here. Remember to use the text to video and connect with the multi talk. That is so far what we can do. And let's see if we have more exploration coming up in future video tutorials. I think in upcoming videos, I will be trying to install the full model weights of MultiTalk and use their native Python code and see how that looks. Some logic might give me some inspirations. Maybe we can do multi character as well. But then I see this AI model natively built is able to use multiple voices for talking. So let's see if we can do that in upcoming tutorials. So we will keep inspiring and keep exploring more. And I will see you guys on the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.